Most perennial gardens are in their prime from late May through July. It's a glorious and beautiful but very short eight weeks. By August, around this time, these plants have usually finished blooming and they're looking pretty tired. One way that we've gotten over this is we've made sure to have flowers and perennials that don't start blooming until here in the late summer. So now, today, we'd like to show you some of the most reliable plants, some of our favorites, that bloom here in August and September. And that's right, and we still have a bunch flowering, actually. So I'm just gonna show you over here a really yellow, beautiful perennial uh, called Solbrud, and it's really a pretty one. It attracts a lot of insects as well. It has a really good height this year, actually, Last year wasn't so high, but it's out here where we can really uh, see it and enjoy it. And just look at the, the colors here. They are really pretty. And as you can see, all the insects, they just really fly around different insects here. Has a good height here. Um, and uh, it actually likes, it's in direct sunlight here. It's in well-drained uh, soil. And you can actually, um, do cuttings of it, but you could also collect seeds if you want to have a, a bigger group. Sometimes I do, when the com uh, wind comes, sometimes that's also why I put it next to other perennials, but I do a little staking, either bamboo sticks or half of a broken butterfly uh, stem here. I just used because it, it has a tendency to fall a little bit over, so I just stake it a little bit to keep it uh, upright here. We also have it in a dark, sort of a burnt orange color, That's which true. is also really pretty. A little lower variety uh, that we can show uh, later on. And it's really a nice combination next to the other one that also really is a famous perennial here, the, the poor pozole had the echinacea. And look at those that later on really gets super spiky. That also has a very long flowering time, likes a little bit what when we did when we these are uh, sown from seeds it takes around two years before they start to flower and they are uh, they need cold and changing temperatures to grow the seeds so we had those in the in the greenhouse in uh, january and then they start to sprout in march anyway but these ones are the second season so they are starting to flower now they like also like it's um from uh, originally from I believe North America, but where it's very on the prairies. So they like really sandy. So what we did, we mixed a little bit of sand in the soil because they like, they were also drought tolerant, really easy. And the bees really crazy enough, even though it's a bit spiky, they really get attracted to these. So also a good bee uh, magnet here and has really, really long flowering time. Also here in this next to the uh, soul pool in direct sunlight, that's where they really thrive. And we try not to have them hidden too much of other ones. They don't like to be smushed from other perennials too much. So give them a good space there as a, as a group there. So they are really doing well. This is one of my absolute favorites any time of year. Has great foliage all year, but now here in mid-August, it's starting to flower. It's a sedum, dark leaf, touchdown teak. What an incredible name. Yeah. We have it not only in this dark foliage, we have several others. The more right over here in here. Denmark. Oh, let me hop up. And they actually just about here in yeah, mid August, they are about to just come now. And funny is in Danish it's called Sankt Hans Ort, and Sankt Hans is actually the day on my birthday. So it's a funny name that because that's in June uh, 23rd, my birthday, and uh, that's Sankt Hans, and normally with this name you would think, okay, it would flower on my yeah, birthday. Yeah, so the flower is technically yeah. named after a festival here in Denmark yeah. that's on June 23rd, right around midsummer. It's when they used to burn... Y'all burned a witch? <laughs> we burned witches in the old days. Yeah, in the old days yeah. it was, uh, you know, I don't know enough about St. Tans. I no, need to look But we still up. have, uh, even from the kindergarten when I was a teacher, we would make a little cloth witch and then burn her on the fire. So yeah. we still have the tradition, that, but just... Even here on the beach, they raise a big yeah. pyre and they burn a pretend witch. We sing some songs. On the ocean. And, yeah. So this flower... <laughs> anyway, back to Something to look up. If you're interested, yeah. look up um, St. Hans. I'll be sure to write it in the in the caption. But yeah. And these ones are really like, they like full sun. They don't really take much. They are uh, drought tolerant. And the easiest way to propagate these is by cuttings. You could also divide them, but cutting, if you have them in a bouquet, leave them in water, they would uh, start to 
uh, create roots really quickly or just uh, add them in a pot uh, with potting soil and then over time they will uh, create roots. You can also divide it when it gets bigger. Sometimes the bigger variety needs some staking or what you could do. Some of them kind of grow a little bit up from the surface you so you could uh, dig it up and then uh, actually bury them a little bit deeper so they don't tend to fall or you could do some staking around it. But that's a great way to get more, definitely the touchdown teak, the dark leaf one, the dark foliage one, I did uh, some cuttings of that so I could get some more because it's really a pretty color. It is a stunning one and here's another one that flowers all the way through the autumn, great ground cover here. Yes. The tepepeel wood here that starts with these, this one, and it's still, still coming. White ones here, and then they start, then they turn over in like a, a pinkish rose color here. And then in the end, they turn, do we have some turn more and more like a little brownish, but we still leave them on. But then eventually you could trim those off. But, but even the brown is like, yes. there's one right there. This like, one? Uh, yeah, kind of that brown. Yeah. So it's almost like a dried, Strawberry brown? Not, I don't know. <laughs> but it's really pretty. So you get three different shades. What I mean by that is even the brown doesn't look like a typical dead seed head. You're still getting some texture and some nice color. And here, as, as you said, it's a great a ground cover. It quickly spreads. It has like roots here. All this is actually, I would, so you can see then on the side here, it would start to create some roots here. So it's, but then I, in the, here in, the, in the, actually a few weeks when it's finished flowering, I would trim that back and I could uh, move it up to some other areas. So it could be in different areas of the, of the garden, but it really quickly spreads. We love that one. Yeah. So that's a nice one. Let's take them up here to some more. We have this one that actually just started to flower. The Rudbeckia here, the yellow one. I just love this one. It's really pretty. I love yellow, yellow. Really yellow really gives a pop of color and also with this the the darker spot here really gives a nice contrast to yeah the other ones the the other perennials in the back but that's because it comes now and flowers for weeks on and off on and on and it's in direct sunlight here really drought tolerant and also spreads with the um, side shoot so eventually you will get more and you can easily move them to other areas in the garden and it's also easy to propagate by seed, which, which I do a lot too. So that's really a nice um, perennial as well. For here in the late summer. Yes. And another one also, <laughs> because we love yellow, is this um, cocard, the blanket flower. And that just flowers for months. That's one of the per perennials here in the garden. Also, it's low, so we have it to the, really to the edge. This is one plant, so it really gets wide. Sometimes when they open up, you could stake it a little bit so it gets a little bit more compact looking. Yeah, this is this plant's second year, and you can see here in the middle that it's starting to split, we, yes. we like to say. So that's what, that's what he means by opening up. So we will do a little, uh, little staking here so it really gets a little bit more compact looking. But as you can see here, all we do a lot of, in general, a lot of deadheading because that really makes the uh, flower, the plant produce more and more uh, new flower buds. And this one really goes until, it's not a lie, until frost here in Denmark. So it flowers, that's one of the ones that really flowers for months on and on. And we have it in this more traditional color. If you were to Google blanket flower, this is yeah. the first thing you would see. We also have it with red, and then we have a new peach one. That's also really nice. But, yes. this, but the same idea, the same growing conditions, keep it deadheaded and it'll keep blooming for you. And also here, full sun, and it's in well-drained, rich uh, garden soil we have here in our garden. So it's uh, really thriving, and also insects love this uh, a lot. They really get attracted to this one. So here, another yellow that's, as you can see, back to our fence really gives a nice contrast, is this Stouter Soul Sege that has upright, has no need for staking even in the wind here even our guard is pretty protected it's still windy but has a really good height always almost the same height as me 180 uh, and these are really uh, nice they also keep on just producing new new blooms and they have sized shoots so do 
give them a space where in the spring I can clearly see, okay, they almost moved a meter out from the main I had. So do be aware that it, it will spread quite quickly, but easy to remove with a spade. Loves full sun, doesn't take much. Um, it's a little bit more poor so soil over here, more drained because we had old uh, pieces of gravel and rocks uh, that has been over here. So they kind of like like whatever soil you have. Also easily to propagate by seeds if you want to have more of this one. So that's really gives, you can see even here, it's moving more and more outwards. So these ones definitely need to be moved somewhere else. And this now here in the middle of August is just now coming into flower. It's also a plant that we don't have to deadhead, so you don't yeah. have to worry about that. It'll keep blooming without you even having to get to it. That's why Lars put it way, way, way away from me. Back so over by can the fence. Right. And this color, come on, it's like, you can only get happy by this bright yellow. I love it. Convinced. Good. Speaking of bright yellow, tell us how you get happy by this dark. <laughs> no, but well, that's yeah, a different contrast. But this is been a Bampton and compared to the, to the big taller sister, uh, this one is a perennial that will come back every year. And the more uh, full sun it gets, the more darker foliage it's, it's, it will have, as you can see here. And then it gets this yeah, it's really close to the border here, but uh, this is kind of the height it gets, um, around 70 centimeters, maybe at the max, but uh, it's really doing well here. And it's also full sun, doesn't take much, comes back every year. You can do uh, cuttings of it very easily within, if I put them in, uh, in midsummer, some cuttings in, within a week or two, it will have sprouted or uh, produced uh, roots. But you can also, it's a, a great uh, self uh, seeder so um, you will also have a bunch of new ones but it will give a lot of contrast and flower for a very long time as well. Exactly and it's also a plant that you don't really have to do anything else to. You don't have to deadhead this one obviously and it flowered. starts flowering mid to end July and it's going to keep on with these small pretty little purple flowers. You can see even over here the other blanket flower there's another that has been hidden that needs to be moved. A baby Bampton that's growing actually in the, this other kind of more reddish uh, blanket flower here. There's a one that needs to be moved. So another great late flowering is this Hust anemone that has a really upright, strong stem. So no need to have any staking here. It comes in this, um, uh, different colors. You have this variety in just clear uh, white here. And then over here we have some that has more like um, with some, it has even the pink on the back. So it's a bit more uh, pink. Yeah, like a light yeah. rosy pink. Right. And as you can see down here, it really has a lot of uh, big foliage, big leaves here. So they, so they really also cover up if you want. If you have an area with a bunch of weeds or you want it really closed up so you can once this is established, it's really uh, quickly spread and you will have more, not uh, worse than you can remove it, but it gives really a nice color. Definitely this white one, also a lot of color now here in August and much later on in the season as well. So that's and speaking uh, of removing, we, you do remove a lot of these every spring. These friends and neighbors and people that come to the, to the plant markets that we go to, they really like this. Yeah. So it's very easy let it grow in the early spring. You see where it's coming up, you dig it up, yeah. give it away or sell it. Yeah. People go crazy for it. And if we go a little bit further up here, we also have one that I really like that we have in a bigger group over there actually, but it's hard to come that close. The Dua, Dua Hoi over look there. back there. But it's actually here. And this one is also just a really pretty um, perennial as well. With this, it has very, very dark foliage here. Isn't that beautiful? And in Danish, these are called dove heads, right? Is yes. that the translation? Yeah. yeah. So dove heads, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Those are really pretty. And the foliage, as you can see, is really like a very a dark one. It's, we have some in the full sun and some a little bit more half shade. And they also, over time, Actually, I just got a little clump from the neighbor. She has them in a the big area, also on the trees, they are great. And now we just have a, a big area that we can start to give away to other people as well, um, because they, uh, in time, really spread on the side. You can also collect seeds of that one, but that's also a, a, a nice color contrast to the, to the white uh, Hust anemone over there. 
this one is Kves wood and it's just a really so showstopper here. It starts with these small buds here and then it's just starting to flower now and it just looks like a little fluffy, a cl a long cloud actually and they are really stunning. It gets really, and even the foliage as well down here if you can see, it also has a very nice foliage. It's on almost on the border here so we can really enjoy it because the foliage is not too high, around 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters and then they get these long stems up with these really puffy clouds here and it's doing really well also flowers for quite some long time it's in mostly in sun uh, well-drained rich soil and you could also by time it's not so old yet but you could also um, propagate it by uh, division uh, later on in, in autumn and one reason why we put it here you can see all of our hydrangea in the back if we had anything too tall or anything with foliage that came up too high yeah it'd be a little harder to see the hydrangea so that's why we went with these like Lars said, the stems are nice and tall. You can see through that. And then the foliage is just below and behind that. Lars, can you move that foliage and we'll show them the, the stones back there that we have the separating oh. the hydrangeas. So, so this is yeah. sort of the border that separates. Yeah. It's some stones back there. So the foliage kind of hides that. But look at them. These fuzzy pink clouds as Lars called. They're like caterpillars, right? Yeah. Crazy. I really love this perennial. It's, some of it is uh, finished, but it still has a lot to go here, flowers for a long time. That's Liatris in this really wonderful, I think, purple color here. We also have them in white, not in a big group like this, but also the foliage is just almost looks like a pine tree. Loves full sun and it uh, produces actually a how is it that you always call it? Corm. A corm, yeah, I would say a bulb, but yeah, corm. So in Danish we would say an knoll. And uh, all these would later on produce, all this will be like a seed head, almost looks like a little like a dandelion. And so it's easy to, to grow from seeds. They are like also the, like the echinacea, you need to have them cold sown. We do it in the greenhouse again, January, and then they will sprout in March. And then you have these small pieces of grass. And then on the second year, they start to, to flower. But these are also really nice, and the insects also like this one. So let's take them over to some more. Let's do it. Another one that just started to flower here in the middle flower bed there, and it's a tall variety, is Jordetrust. And it's really also quite nice, slim stems here, but doesn't need any staking and it has a very nice also foliage and it's in full sun and once it starts to open the bees will also really be attracted to that one. So that's a nice one and if we go over to uh, over here next to this one it's also it has f flowered for some time now the the Agastache here the Anisiobe it's also called and um, this is Blue Fortune and it's one of my really favorite also perennials in the garden. Attracts a bunch of different insects and, and bees. Here's a big one. And um, so it will keep even for weeks now. It's also a, a perennial that flowers for months. And the leaves here actually also, when you, you can use it for tea, you can uh, make wonderful and it really smells uh, really like a licorice uh, smell or flavor to it so that's really a nice as well and you can divide that you can also collect seeds we have it in I mean, blues and pinks and whites as well so it comes in different varieties it likes full sun and it's uh, really not uh, picky on the soil as well it's doing really well it has a good height here so it's really close to also to the to the other perennials we have and, and the uh, Nine bark over here is doing really well. Exactly. What about these asters? This is also Oops, another great yes. one here in the late summer. We don't have such a big group of them. No. But they we, are great. They give you lots of color. They're just blooming now. That's true. And you can get them in whites and, and uh, many other colors as well. So that's really a, a, a nice one. We're also quite fortunate that we still have things like Astrantia and yeah. some, even some of our Monada is still in flower. But technically, that's not what you would go for if you really want that late summer color. Good, let's go over here. Here's another variety of sedum that we have, also with really dark foliage, really spectacular. And it's right under the Agastache here. So one here is uh, Anne Pries. This 
wonderful blue color. It has flowered also for months. But what I did, as you can see here, this is actually its second uh, set of flowering. So when they're like this, starting almost also this one, I could go almost ahead to move. I'll just move it down to the stem because then it gets side shoots and you will have another set of flowering here and the bees are in it all day. So that's really a nice one, this Veronica. Also pretty tall, but I have it actually still close to the border so we can enjoy it. And another one that really one of my favorites and close to my heart is this uh, Heliopsis here. Dao Oye is really nice with a dark, dark foliage and then these wonderful yellow, orangey uh, flowers here as well. And also doesn't need any staking. These are grown from seeds last year. So it's actually the second uh, flowering time here and they are also giving night height. And again, uh, full sun here and also loved by the insects. Especially height for this time of year. We're not, we're not really big on cutting down things too early. We have cut down like the agalaya. A lot of things after we collect the seeds, we've cut them back. So we do miss a bit of height here in the late summer, but it's something like this that, wow, really takes all that attention. But it's still nice that we have a bunch of color here and we are now in almost mid-August, uh, so it's nice we have a bunch to still look at. In exactly, the and some things are just getting started. So there you have it. Hopefully you've gotten a few ideas of some perennials that you can plant in your garden. You can already start them now, and then you're guaranteed to have that late summer color next season. So thanks so much for watching. Let us know in the comments what's your favorite and what you have growing this time of year in your garden. Moin, tak for